Welcome back, everybody. This is a case where I do a vitrectomy for opacities or floaters uh, in a patient with asteroid hyalosis, and I'll also induce a PVD. Once we get started, this is a typical appearance of asteroid hyalosis. For those of you who've watched many videos, it looks exactly like kenalog, kind of white deposits that are suspended throughout the vitreous. Believe it or not, the asteroid hyalosis itself does not usually cause uh, complaints of floaters. This is a patient who incidentally had asteroid hyalosis and had long-standing floaters for uh, several years. Now, as I go through and remove the vitreous, you can tell in this case that I'm removing the vitreous because the asteroid hyalosis or the asteroid bodies uh, are getting fewer and the vitreous cavity is getting clearer. At this point I'm suspecting that there is no PVD or posterior vitreous detachment because you can see some of the asteroid bodies uh, kind of stuck or are remaining close to the retina and the only reason that would be is if there is still uh, vitreous adherent to the retina. So I'm going to clean up the vitreous a little bit more, kind of finish my so-called core vitrectomy, and then I'm going to inject right here a little bit of Kenalog, same color, kind of a finer powder. And you'll see that it's actually kind of floating on the surface of the retina, and that's a sign to me that there is still, or there are still layers of vitreous adherent to the retina. Now what I normally do is I remove excess Kenalog, which is kind of what I'm doing here, and then at the same time I'm going to pull up on the posterior part of the vitreous. That's excessive Kenalog. Now watch this, it's going to come up pretty quickly. See how it kind of comes up towards the microscope? Towards the anterior vitreous. And now that's the posterior vitreous which is being lifted off the posterior retina. And in this way, I can most efficiently remove vitreous. What I'm doing here is I'm trying to separate the vitreous from the retina all the way to the sides or to the equator. And now the vitreous can freely move to the vitrectomy instrument. And it doesn't really matter where the tip of the instrument is. The vitreous will just flow to the tip of the instrument and it's safely removed from the eye. And in this way, I don't need to worry about where floaters or vitreous um, may remain in proximity to the surface of the retina. And again, the appearance of the Kenalog is almost identical to the asteroid hyalosis. But you can tell now that some of the particles of the Kenalog are just kind of moving along the surface of the retina instead of being suspended like uh, just a minute or two ago. And this is a clear sign to me that the surface, the retinal surface, no longer has vitreous attached to it. So I'm going to go along and remove more vitreous in the peripheral retina doing so to be careful not to touch the lens and I certainly want to do cause no harm but we can get very very far out to the side to make sure that this vitreous is not seen later And I'll go around one or two more times, but you can already see how much clearer the vitreous is, either compared to the asteroid or compared to when I injected Kenalog. Now there's some haziness in the front of the eye. Uh, this pr patient had a lot of kind of oil in their tears, so it was very sticky on the surface of the cornea. So we had to wash it off a little bit more frequently to keep the cornea nice and clear. Um, we had to wash it off a little bit more often than we normally do. There's a little bit of Kenalog stuck on the macula. I decided that I'm just going to leave it there because it'll dissolve by the morning. Well, I hope you enjoyed this. Uh, 
I'll be seeing you next time. Thanks so much for watching. My name is Randy Wong. I'm a retina specialist in Fairfax, Virginia. Thanks so much for following and watching. Take care.